Hello, this is Yazzy again. Take three of trying to do my first ever tutorial because people keep walking into the room and, and interrupting the recording. Mundane things like little brothers telling me they've got friends coming over, as if I care, so on and so forth. This is my factory. I thought I'd give you guys a little guided tour before I get on with the tutorial. Obviously, you know what this is nice little force field, zapper upgrade. Makes a nice sphere, 30 blocks ride, absolutely destroys the power. Yep, we've got full. I'll show you what it's like. In case you guys have never seen one before. Oh, it seems to be lagging a tad. Yeah, there we go. Nice little spherical force field. Anything that touches it will die. Let's turn it off. Because I'd like to actually walk around. It's not disappearing. I don't know why I've got the force field. It's not like I need it. I have the death prism up there with what's probably going to be the world's biggest Tesla coil inside. But you'll see that soon. Oh, there goes the force field. Game's gonna speed up a bit now. Inside here we have my remote energy core for Minecraft jewels for thermal expansion and wet power machines, stuff like that. That's actually controlled by the PC I've got down here. Which I'll show you. These stairs aren't exactly well designed, I'm still building this place. And I fall off them all the time. Absolute pain. Lever under there looks a bit tacky. You get the point. Soldering station, so the logic logistics HVD glasses. Power armor tinker table, as you can see. Oops, I've got camo on, so you can't see that at all actually. But there it is. All the modules installed and so on and so forth, yada yada. There's my PC. Links up there. It's linked up to the lights control them as well. And my support frame door, which closes and opens. Quite nifty, I'm not going to lie random bed there for the sake of it. We have my industrial screen there, information panel. If you don't know how to use those I can make a tutorial if it's enough people request it. If you would rather just go and find out how to do it straight away without waiting, the Minecrafters did a great tutorial on it, that's how I learnt. So go and visit those guys out. They're great. I watch them all the time. Uh, what else do we have? Over here we have factorization stuff. Craft packet stamper and craft packet... What was that? Doesn't say. Craft packet something. You, you can look it up, you know what I mean. This is the factorization stuff. This could essentially triple your ore production if you have the time and the patience to do it. You put this in here. I, mean, I put five in here and as you can see I've got 14 back. That's a lot. And then you've got to put it in here and some water here. And it'll come over here, make clean iron chunks and give you an empty bucket and sometimes sludge which can be smelted into clay. Then when that's done you put it in here and it'll give you some more stuff and then you put it in the crystallizer which takes a very long time. For each one here it takes 20 minutes. So as you can see that's going to take five hours just to smelt those. But again there's always the chance it can double. Aquaregia, that's the stuff you use to power it very handy to make. Usually you use sulfuric acid in here but that runs out so if you take a sulfuric acid, a fire charge and a crushed neverack powder you can make this which never runs out, it's infinite. So very handy indeed. What else we got? Oh, down here is where I made my first cobblestone generator. Quite handy. Lots of timers and god knows what and behind this wall here we have the output of the cobblestone generator. This goes into the recycler in there via this timer. Down here we have a lot more wiring and cabling and god knows what else and that sends all the scrap from that recycler into a chest that's down there somewhere in that room behind the glowstone bricks and then another switch to pump into the mass fabs. But I didn't think that was too grand so I made a bigger one which I'll go over in a bit. Here we have my power room as you can see pretty high. Unfortunately, I did have solar panels at the top of the chimney, but the death prism got a tad in the way and actually covered all my solar panels and didn't give me any power. Find here we have a nice little transposer set up, taking everything out of these and taking it into the chest downstairs. Standard thermal expansion stuff, pulverized induction smelter sawmill, all all powered by conductive phase conductive pipes, all tuned to the frequency of my remote core up there. Same goes for in here, and so far we have 
some melted molten redstone and molten ender, which is when you m melt uh, ender pearls in these magma crucible. And it looks like I've got some stored in there, so I should probably transport pipe that at some point. And then we just have standard room, forge lips, come to turn ingots into different mod ingots, alloy furnace, anvil, blah blah blah. You get it. I haven't built stairs yet, so let's just drop. Down here is pretty cool. We have our battery boxes. They were powered by solar panels, but I need to set that back up. This room was full of chests, and I mean three chests high, and in the end I had, had to move the top level because they wouldn't open. And now it, everything's just in here. I've been playing this for a very long time now, and well, got wireless access point. As you can see, I've got a lot. I've got something stupid like six million cobblestone, I think it is. Let's have a gander. Cobblestone. Yeah, there you go. Six million. A tad ridiculous, but oh well. Oh, escape. Uh, that sort of factorization stuff, it comes from outside. You might be able to see it just over there on the map. Solar panels and whatnot. Right then, let's go jumping. Best thing about the power armor, don't take the need stairs, I'll just jump. Because I jumped pretty damn high. Right then, we've got rubber trees over there is where I. Well, I'm attempting to learn how to crossbreed plants, it's not going so well. That's a wireless access terminal, so I can access my inventory for a maximum of 16 blocks past this, and I've got one over there. There's three more that way, and another one in the underwater base I have over there, which I'll come and show you very, very quickly, because I don't know how long this is going to record for, and I should probably sort it out. Oh my. So much lagging and rendering. Rain, rain. Well, that's not going to make it last any better, is it? The door open. Doors open. We're all good. Here. Love the little glitch there. Doors open, but apparently water can't come through. We're lagging. Yay! That's because it's raining. Let's just get rid of that. Right. So, remember I was saying I didn't like the cobblestone generator because it was on too small a scale. Well, I sorted that out, and now we have this cobblestone generator. Three different ones, it's all into the chest. Again, that timer there pumps everything from the chest upstairs into the recyclers. That's where these go. I've got lots of recyclers, by the way, be warned. And in, then into the mass fabs, which are almost opposite, along with the six MFUs, I, or eight MFU, MFUs I have up here. I mean, I've covered it all with the micro blocks covers as best, as best as I can, because it just looks cool. I like it, as you can see, recyclers there, and where are the tubes? I'll cover the tubes up, Let's see if we can just see one, shall we? Oh, it's not letting me do it, that's because that's a transposer. But yeah, mass fabs are on the, that level, I believe. For example, if I turn this on, it would start lagging incredibly. But you'll see UU matter just pump out, and there's a lot of it. So, enough of the lag, I'll turn this off. And well, as you can see, there's a lot. This all pumps into here, and I'll usually leave it at that. But when I see it, that was empty a minute ago, I've got that much just from that very small amount of pumping. Alright then. Let's go get on with the tutorial, shall we? Am I going to be able to fly properly? No, let's teleport. <laughs> He's not going to teleport for me. There we go, teleport. Right then, enough laggy. Let's get started on this tutorial. The first thing he wanted to see was about farming. So let's start with growing wheat, which is this stuff here. Quite useful can be put in a crafting table and made free for to make bread like fuss. One, two, three, bread, food, standard, pretty easy. And that grows from these seeds, which are very easy to find. All that grass stuff over there, just break it. Let me show you quickly. Eventually you'll get seeds. If you're playing tech it light like I am, you'll also get flax seeds occasionally. There you go, flax seeds. There you go, seed. Pretty easy, grass is almost all over the place, unless you have incredibly bad luck and manage to spawn 
in a very large desert biome, at which point you're what I like to call a little screwed. So just run, find it. There's a common misconception with seeds. Some peop for some reason people like to think that you need water to grow them. You do not. In fact, you don't need water to grow anything other than flax on Tessitelite and sugarcane in standard Minecraft. That's what I shall show you. Seeds, in they go. The reason you know they'll grow without water is because if they couldn't grow without water, you would not be able to place them. And look, grown already. For example, if I was to take this out and put my sugarcane here, you cannot place it. It has to be placed adjacent to a water block. There it goes. Even if I have to hoe the soil, you cannot place it. Let's just get rid of that. There we go. Pretty simple. Same goes for carrots. We have carrots here, potatoes, melon seeds, pumpkin seeds. They will all grow. Melon seeds. Let's get rid of that. Pumpkin seeds. Also hoe. These three pumpkin seeds, they grow. Now they take a long time to grow, but I'll, I've got plenty of foam along me, so I'm just going to cheat and show you exactly what they look like when they're fully grown. Okay. Oh, dear. Me. Carrots again, straight in. Nothing, nothing really bad. They're all good. Potatoes, just straight in. Oh, for God, there's a bit of thing there. Right then. Next thing. We've done all of that. So the next thing we want to do is this. Never wart. Notice how you cannot place it in tilled soil. What you have to do is break these. And I'm just going to break these with my hand because if I use my spade it will just destroy everything because it's that good. You need soul sand which can only be found in the never. And unfortunately I'm quite jealous of the Xbox version for this, they had an update recently, Never Wart now grows all over the Never, whereas we have to put up with finding it only in Never Fortresses, if the fortress hasn't glitched and there's actually a Never, never Wart room in it that hasn't been overcome with lava. So much rage. But yep, just plant like you normally would, and that place is there. And it does grow. Eventually, it takes quite a while, but that's that. Right now, there's only one thing you can possibly do, there's only two other things I need to do now. Oh good god, what have I done here? I've got dirt on me. I don't need dirt on me. Let's get rid of that dirt. Goodbye dirt. Yeah, see? Wireless terminal. My entire inventory. Everything I own. Just at my fingertips. Now I can place that back in there. Seeds, pumpkin seeds, never wart. Carrots, potato, soul sand. We've done that. Oh, escape every time, I keep forgetting. Right, mushrooms. You cannot grow them out here. They actually, they actively refuse to be placed. Any light, any light source at all will stop them growing. So, if you're going to grow them around a place like this, you need to make a very dark cave, which I didn't have very good hindsight and I did not go and do. Oh, is my night vision going? But you know, you get the idea. Just take my word for it. But if you find a uh, mushroom island with mushrooms, those are red cows with mushrooms on the back, quite good, a very infinite source of mushroom soup, as long as you've got bowls. What you can do is place mycelium, like so, place a mushroom on it, they will grow, and to signify this, there you go, we have a brown mushroom tree. Oh. Way too close. My game is lagging it out again. There we go. A mushroom tree. Pretty simple. They'll grow on mycelium no matter where they are, no matter the light level. If you try growing them on standard dirt and the light level gets too high, they will pop out of the ground. Right then, let's show you what wheat looks like. That's the fully grown wheat. You just hit it and it'll give you seeds and or wheat. Well, it'll, it'll always give you wheat, but sometimes it doesn't want to give you seeds. Which one's this one? I think this is pumpkin. That and melon, melon look pretty much the same. Now, once this has grown, you'll never have to plant it again. It will constantly spawn its load onto any adjacent dirt block. And I mean any one. Could be there, could be there, could be there. And that one, if, it, that, if the pumpkin does place there, the melon will place there or there. 
You just destroy the block it spawns and that will make another one. Pretty simple. Right. These, that's what carrots look like when they're grown. Fully. Potatoes, pretty much the same, just potatoes. Never walked is annoying, it has four stages of growth. That's the first. The second and the third look almost exactly the same. And the fourth is a lot bigger. You can't use bone mill on it, if you check. So you're going to have to wait to see what that looks like. I'm pretty sure I've got some over in there, actually. So I'm going to show you what fully grown never walked looks like. Unfortunately, I really don't want to break this because I did it in total darkness in here. That's fully grown never walked. I believe that's stage two. What's that growing over there? Ah, crossbreeding, terawart, brilliant. I'll go over that later. And I think it might have grown melons here, which I really didn't want it to do, but it could be coca. That's grown stick creed, god damn it. Those, th those are like weeds. Kill them, kill it with fire. Okay, right. Oh, what is that? That's weak, we're, we're cool, we're cool. Right, so that's pretty much the basics of growing stuff. Like I said, sugar cane needs to be placed by a water block. Again, I'll just demonstrate that for purposes. Uh, sugar cane, where are you? Turns out I've got cane on me. I'm being an absolute moron. What I don't have is a water bucket. So let's just break that. Place a bit of water there. And sure you can come place on almost any material. Like, can't place it there because it's not next to the water. There, however, you can. Sand, dirt, and that'll grow up to maximum of three blocks tall. You can place it on top of the sugar cane, like so. Oh, God's sake. Got to get out of the jumping. Come on. For example, you can place it to four blocks tall. And once it gets to three blocks tall, best way of harvesting it, just beat that. We get two, that one will grow more every time. Right then, so let's go over the basics of farming. Goodbye. Oh, last thing. How could I forget? Jungle saplings. Let's get four, shall we? One. And it'll just grow them all. Now we have a very large jungle tree. Let's get rid of these vines. Cocoa beans. This is the only way you can grow cocoa beans. Luckily, if you're playing this version or the high version of Minecraft 1.4.7 or later you will have jungle biomes and on the side of jungle trees you can grow coca beans and it can be any block it can be all the way up there it can be down here next to the floor so you could have one tree that's just mass producing coca beans until the ends of time you'll never ever run out of them and with that done we're going to throw that in there the bone will keep on us, I don't need flax or melon seeds right now. Flax is a bit annoying, it takes absolutely ages to grow. You need hydrated soil, but it is a very handy source of string. But I'm not going to go over that until I've showed you the basics of farming, because right now I'm just trying to show you what you can do on standard Minecraft if you're not playing Tech It Lite, or if you don't have a premium account yet, which I shelled out for. <coughs> oh, pardon me. Right then, let's get on with the basics of farming. Let's l create myself a little pen for the cow, shall we? Won't take too long, I promise. I hope. Well, that's just embarrassing. Is it there? No, no, it was not. That's even more embarrassing. Let's get that out, shall we? That one over there as well. Don't like it. It's bugging me. And here we have our little cow pen. Alright, if you're playing standard Minecraft, there's only one way of getting cows, well, getting animals to come over and sit at your base. I'm just going to press the wrong button and make the computer lag for a second, apparently, because I'm in rescue mode. So let's go to cheat mode. Get myself two spawned cow eggs, place them on the ground, mm -hmm. we have cows. 
the only way you can ever actually make them come to you. And this works. This works the same for sheep. Is having wheat. They will follow you wherever you go, so you can just walk them back to your tent. Sheep, cows, mushrooms for wheat. He's went down. They'll stop bothering. It's chickens love seeds, so that's that. And pigs, for some stupid reason, you've got to give them carrots because Minecraft pigs are donkeys. Right. There we go again. Let's pick up some wheat, shall we? Got enough, I think. Wheat. Come on, guys. Look, I've got wheat. Do you like it? Do you like it? Yeah. They're not liking it. Oh, he likes it. Now, if you were to feed it to them, to two different ones, they will do this and breed, and you'll get a little experience orb. And look, look little baby cow. Yeah. So that's how you do that. And if you were to use an empty bucket on a cow, we've got milk, which is pretty cool, and you can actually drink that. Quite handy. Quite, not quite sure what it does, I've never really had a use for milk. Because, well, I, as you might have to guess, I've been playing at night time. There are no enemies, because I'm playing on Peaceful just for tutorial purposes. Not that I need to with that thing up there, but oh well. Um, if you don't feel like running after those annoying cows with wheat and making them follow you back, we have this, the Safari Net Launcher, which is very cool. You make it like so. Two bits of gunpowder, two bits of glowstone, which is from the nether. Those you mostly get from creepers. You can get it in other ways on this game, and I will go over that soon. Redstone, got a mine for it, I'm afraid. Iron, again, got a mine for it. These plastic sheets, you need four bits of raw plastic, and that will give you four plastic sheets. Now, to make raw plastic, you just smelt a bit of rubber in, a, in a, any furnace. Powered furnace, and iron furnace, standard furnace. If you're playing foam craft and you've got the foam furnace, then there's that too, but I don't have that. Make rubber, obviously. Get some sticky resin from a rubber tree. There you go, rubber. Pretty so pretty simple. Yeah, just that. And gunpowder. Come on. Computer's not being happy today. If you're, if you're using thermal expansion, if you get a nitre sulfur and a bit of coal, a bit of gunpowder. If you're, you've got loads of UV matter, gunpowder. Co coal dust, which is from a macerator with coal. Gunpowder, pretty sorted. Again, mix the same recipe. It's factorization. There's that. These are the nets. To make the nets, you need one bit of leather, one slime ball, four bits of string. Pretty simple. And this is how it works. Just shoot it in. And there you go. I've got one back. And you can just shoot it back out, let out. I think I'm too close to him. It's occurring. Yep, I've used both nets. Yeah, that's how the Safari Network launch works. Very easy for catching things, very easy for bringing them back. Hmm, I'm trying to think of what else my friend was trying to talk to me about here now. Uh, I don't know, I mentioned something earlier, but I completely forgot it. So, for the moment, I'm going to go show you what the death resin looks like just because, well, I need to remember what I was doing. There's the teleporter, because the flying up there takes too much time and effort and I don't have a window. Here we go, we are in the death prison. I'm going to change these for inverted lamps at some point because I don't like the red wire, it looks ugly. Then we go in here and we have the world's largest Tesla coil. Do you like it? We have four HV solar arrays at the top there, attached to an MFSU, and the cable comes all the way down to the coil at the bottom. We have one layer there of speed upgrade, which is really fast, it does it like a continuous beam, makes me very happy indeed. And then everything else you see is range upgrades. You, it does max out at 100 blocks unfortunately, and each one of these increases it by 10. I don't know how many I've got here, I reckon I could probably get up to well over a thousand blocks range. But I went into the config file and just changed the range to 500 because I uh, 100 was not reaching down below my factory. We've got four rooms, just like that, small little rooms. Only one of them is in use for the moment, and that's the teleporter. Da -da 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 -da. Yada yada, so on, so forth. So let's teleport back down here. 
Right then, what was I meant to be doing? Maybe there's a clue in my inventory. Done cows, fences, safari nets, bone meal, wheat growing, all of that jazz. Yeah. Right then, I think I'm done for standard Minecraft. That is all, everything I did there, minus the safari net launcher, is very doable in normal Minecraft. You don't need tech it to do that, that's easy. Right then, but what you do need tech it for is this crossbreeding. Let's just give myself a few crops because I don't have any right now and you won't be able to see what I'm doing. So, where's my dirt? Don't have any dirt. Pain in the ass. I'm going to get rid of that. Here's the irony I've been trying to get terawatt for a long time, and funnily enough, there it is. The way to crossbreed. Once these ones here are fully grown, that one and that one, you just place a second one there like that and it'll grow. All you've got to do is place it until soiled and then you can place any plant in there. Notice how I've got never wart on dirt. Go away, I don't want never wart. That's that. Right then, terror wart. And it's giving me a seed bag. Let's grow more. Unknown seeds. How to make here the crop analyzer. That's how you make that. Copper cable. Pretty self explanatory. Bit of insulated copper cable. And a bit of rubber, like so. And to make the uninsulated copper cable, any three copper ingots in an amount like that gives you six. And then you have to do glass, which is smelting sand, as you know, redstone, this electronic circuit, refined iron. If you're fairly new to tech it right, to get refined iron, you just smelt an iron ore into an iron ingot and then smelt an iron ingot into refined iron. Pretty simple. And that'll give you the electronic circuit. And I'm power powering this with a energy crystal, I believe. And indeed, to make that, it's a diamond and eight bits of redstone, and then you just charge it in your MFE or higher. Right then, so I have unknown seeds. Let's do that. Terra wart. Drain power from that. Place it in again. Tier five. Discovered by Al Blacker. Blue ether consumable snow. Those are apparently the key terms. And then it will give you the rate, growth none, gain two, resist none. Now that's not overly good, but I'm not going to complain. I've got the seeds, which means I can crossbreed them more if I felt like it. Right, what have you actually grown here? You did grow melons. Well, that's very, very rude. Don't want melons. Oh, dear me. I'm actually trying to grow red wheat here, but it's not having it. Oh, yay, more wort. What else have we got here? Oh, more stuff. I don't think the game's liking me, you know. My luck's not so good at this farming jazz. Yeah, just crops like that. Also, what's very handy, these crop matrons. Right, I've got MFSU set up. I uh, don't know if I'll be able to get down there and show you the setup essentially. Let's have a look. Here it is, downstairs. I've had these do cannot take upgrades, unfortunately, so they have to use very low current. So as you can see, I've got insulated copper cable. That's going into an LV transformer, which is connected to an MV transformer, which is connected to an HV transformer. And that comes all the way back here and goes up there into my MFSUs. But because they're getting so much power right now, I believe they're attached to, I think it's eight, nine, HV solar arrays. I'll go have a look at that in a sec. Oh, oh God, I can't jump for my life. Come on, jump up there. Good boy. Let's get rid of the tail wall seeds. Where's the dirt? Let's that back up. Right, Cropmatron. How do you make a Cropmatron? Believe it, it's that. You need two more electronic circuits to you. A crop, which is just four sticks like that. Two crops, pretty simple. A chest. Everyone should know how to make a chest. It's pretty self-explanatory. Eight wooden planks around the outside. If you don't, you're pretty new to Minecraft, and I don't know why you'd ever be considering doing advanced tech it. Because I've been playing for a long time. I think I'm on day 500. I'm still learning things. Machine block. Eight refined iron, just like that. Pretty easy. And I have two of those. And inside we have fertilizer, because it will automatically fertilize stuff for you. Because bone meal does not work on crops. We have hydration cells. These hydrate the soil, the tilled soil, keeps it nice and moist, so to speak. 
If any of you are laughing dirtily right now, you should slap yourself. I'm talking farming here. And then you have Weedex, which stops weeds. As I saw earlier, not particularly working well because I had to destroy some myself. All right, how do you make fertilizer? From your recycler, you take some scrap. Apparently, here's the most pointless use of fertilizer. Two bits of scrap and a bit of fertilizer will give you another bit of fertilizer. Seems overly pointless. Just use scrap and bone meal too. Bone meal is very easy to get, scrap is very easy to get. Scrap you can make with any, almost any item in the game. There's a few that you can't, but I can't remember them off the top of my head. Then bone meal, again, just kill a skeleton, get a bone, put it in the crafting table, bone meal. Just like that. Sorted. Hydration cells. You have to make a water cell. That's not the best way to do it. That's the best way to do it. Well, it's the second best way. Water bucket and an empty cell in a crafting table is your water cell. To make empty cells, four bits of tin, just like that. And then you put it in, oh dear, you put it in your extractor, powers up like that, water cell, hydration cell. These do not stack, so you can't walk off and leave it. You either have to have a setup from the back that will take it out for you, or you just take it out manually. Weed X is done with, again, empty cell, so I showed you how to make those, four tin, just like that. And then you have redstone at the top, and it's green powder stuff. Now what is green powder? That is a spider eye, macerated. Because apparently spiders grin all the time and that's why you get the powder. As you can see, oh good god. I've got quite a lot of stuff. I'm out of fertiliser, but with all those recyclers on my underwater facility, I won't be for long. Uh, right. This has been Yazzy doing a farming tutorial. I hope this helps some of you people out there. Uh, if you want any more requests, leave me feedback and I look forward to reading comments.